There's so many options on the market today for flea and tick medications, and it is so easy to get overwhelmed and confused. Concerns about efficacy and safety are always on our minds, and making the right decision can seem impossible. What I want to do today is explore some of the current options available focusing on just this. Because life is full of trade-offs, I'll admit there is no perfect solution. But with this information, I hope you can make the decision that is right for you. Here I have a chart. At the bottom of this chart are a few examples of the current methods of flea and tick prevention that are in use today. As we go through these methods, we'll discuss the idea behind how they work, the safety of the product, the trade-offs, and of course, the efficacy. And by the end, I hope you feel a little more comfortable with your decision than when we started. Okay, so at the bottom of the chart, we have Mother Nature. This is obviously the option that animals in the wild encounter. We aren't dosing our pets with anything, but letting what will be, be. Efficacy would be dependent on your individual environment. A pet that lives solely indoors, let's say on the 17th floor of a high rise, has little exposure to fleas and ticks in comparison to an animal that lives in the suburbs and loves to go to the park. It's easy to say that this is the safest option, no chemicals and no pesticides, and also the cheapest option. But is it really? Fleas and ticks carry a multitude of diseases ranging from skin allergies and infections to more serious conditions like flea anemias and Lyme disease. So when you consider the potential health implications and the associated costs in treating these ailments, your calculus on costs and safety may change. Next are home remedies. There are more of these than I can reasonably include in this video, but I'll try and include the most common ones. In this category, we have everything from electrostatic tags that harness the power of the heart to form a force field around your pet, repelling fleas. Also diatomaceous earth, which is a product comprised of small ground up crustaceans that when applied to the pet are thought to lacerate the fleas and ticks. Home constructed flea traps that although do likely attract and catch some amount of fleas are more for weak environmental control than adequately controlling infection on your pet. And lastly, garlic. Unfortunately, no studies have been able to show that garlic has any efficacy in actually killing fleas or ticks and is quite toxic to dogs and cats because when ingested, especially in the more concentrated powdered form, causes hemolytic anemia, an anemia where the red blood cells burst. This category has limited efficacy, especially for pets that may suffer from flea-related allergies, and because these methods are not regulated, their safety is quite variable. Next category is the Stone Age. These are products that do in fact work, but they are the very first iterations of effective flea control. These are chemicals, often pyrethrins, a naturally occurring compound derived from the chrysanthemum plant, and permethrins, a synthetic version. Although they do work at killing ectoparasites, they are not very efficient, requiring high and frequent dosing, resulting in the lowest safety margin. Cats are particularly sensitive and can have serious neurologic conditions associated with these products. This category includes things such as powders, dips, shampoos, and old-fashioned collars. It is true that they are less costly than the more modern alternatives and are readily available as over-the-counter products. But, even though effective, I never recommend these products because application often exposes not only our pets to potentially hazardous chemicals, but also the humans that contact them. So in this instance, the trade-off between cost and minimal efficacy and health concerns should be considered. Oldies but goodies. These are the products that really changed the face of flea control. These products dramatically improved both efficacy and safety, and because of this, these products are still very good options today. To understand what makes these products so safe and effective, we have to understand fleas and ticks as insects. These products, and those that are to come, have such high safety margins for our pets, but are very effective against fleas and ticks because they take advantage of the divergence of insects and mammals on the evolutionary family tree. They target areas of the insect's body and nervous system that don't affect mammals at all. They also have the added benefit of lasting longer. Products such as Frontline and Advantage were the first in this category. As a topical application, they are easy to apply. The fipronil and imidacloprid are not systemically absorbed, but stored in the oil glands and release as oils are released on the hair coat. This is great because it provides a continuous bathing of medication, but also means that bathing or swimming may temporarily remove these products until the oils can repopulate. 
I'm also placing in this category Program or Lufenron. And although it is an oldie, I don't really consider it a goodie because as an insect growth inhibitor, it doesn't actually kill the fleas, but only renders them sterile so they cannot reproduce. This means that any new fleas that find their way onto your pet will still bite your pet until they die of old age. Capstar was another revolutionary product, able to kill all the fleas on your pet within 24 hours. The drawback, however, is that it only lasts 24 hours, making it a great option if you're in a pinch, but impractical for long-term use. The newest category of flea and tick medication is the asaxazolines. Products in this class include Brevecto, Sempirica, Nexgard, and others, and are the most costly. These products have excellent efficacy with fast flea kills and provide excellent protection against flea allergies and parasite-borne diseases. And they also have the added benefit of protecting against other parasites such as mange. These products are thought to potentially lower the seizure threshold, however, in patients that have underlying epilepsy. What this means is, if you have a pet that has already been diagnosed with epilepsy, you may see an increase in the seizure activity. The problem is, there are a certain number of pets that have not yet been diagnosed with epilepsy, and these products may precipitate the condition. For example, let's say a pet has a 2% chance of having epilepsy, and isoxazoline doubles that chance. This means they now have a 4% chance of having a seizure. It's still not 100%, but it is higher than the original. Now, if a pet is not an epileptic, diagnosed or undiagnosed, and has a 0% chance of a seizure, 2 times 0 is still 0. So in the end, statistically, seizures are a very rare occurrence, and the safety margin of these products far surpasses their predecessors. Because of this, these products are considered the gold standard for flea and tick protection in the veterinary community today. So there you have it. I hope you found this video helpful. Remember, each pet is an individual, and these options are always best discussed with your regular veterinarian.